Again, I ask before we go to Psalm 46, what are your fears? It might not be the COVID-19. It might be um, your business, right? Your business is, is affected. It could be the, the stock market. You're heavily invested in it. I don't know what your fears are, but I desire that after we come, after we're done with our study, we would learn how to trust in God like Martin Luther did. In fact, Psalm 46 is one of the famous psalms which the reformers would hold fast as they endure persecution and difficulty. So let's start reading Psalm 46. Brother Kintin, um, for those who are not speaking, can you put it on mute? Thank you. Psalm, Psalm 46. Um, Brother Kintin, read, read verse 1. Okay. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present in trouble. Yes. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. You know that the interesting part here is the word God. The word the word God here is not Jehovah. The word God here is not Yahweh. If you look at the word, it is Elohim. And what does it Elohim mean. It means God Almighty. God who is powerful. In fact, if you look at it, it's a plural. It's a majestic plural. Which means what? This is an almighty God. A very full, powerful God. In fact, it is so powerful it is the same word that was used in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, Elohim created. The, the psalmist wants us to have a right view of God in times of our trials, in times of our difficulty. So, God is our refuge. It's a declaration that God is all-powerful, that God is almighty. Imagine, in the beginning, God created the heavens. He spoke everything into existence out of nothing. I mean, how powerful is that? Right? He speaks everything into existence. Let there be light. And there was light. Elohim said, let the mountains rise. The mountains rose. Verse 1. God is our what? Refuge. When you say refuge, what comes to mind? Anyone? Safe place. A safe place, yes. Security. Security. It's a place of safety, a place of security, a place of protection. It's, it's an unassailable fortress. It's an unconquerable castle. In today's parlance, maybe we can liken it to Fort Knox. And if we run to him and trust him, we are running into a castle, into a fortress, into a secure place. All that wants to assail us must remain outside the fence because He is our refuge. God is our refuge. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can touch you. 
aside from what God sends or allows. That's what it means when you say God is our refuge. No matter what your fears are, you may be afraid of COVID, you might be afraid of other people, you might be afraid of death, you might be afraid of sickness, you might be afraid of loss of business, but God says, I am your refuge. Elohim, God Almighty, is your refuge. Nothing will touch you aside from what God sends or what God allows. So what does that mean in our life? There's nothing, there's no such thing as an accident. For us believers, realize there's no such thing as an accident. Chances and mischances are all thrown out of a window. Now, don't be mistaken that if God is our refuge, it does not mean that there will be no difficulties in our life. Surely there, is, there will be difficulties in our life because that is the tool that God uses to mold us. But realize this, every difficulty that enters your life is ordained by God for good. Because He is our refuge. God and God alone, no other. Nothing in the universe can compare, can give you a better protection than God. Now, some, cont some countries, what's their refuge? Military might, right? Others, economic might. Like you guys, what could, what could be your refuge? Could it be money? Could be stocks? Could be assets? Some people, their, their, their refuge is their parents, their spouse. Nothing wrong with that. But I, I tell you, they will fail. They will disappoint. Some people, their refuge is themselves. Their family, I have a very good, powerful family. My friends is my refuge. My connection is my refuge. Be honest to yourself. When there is fear in your life, who is your refuge? Right? Who is your refuge? Ado, can you go to Jeremiah 17, please? Jeremiah 17, verse 5. Yes, verse 5. Uh, the Lord This is what the Lord said. Yes. First is the one who drives in bad, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. Yeah. Curse is, is a man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength. No matter who you think your refuge is, my friends, that will fail. Now, interesting, if you go back to Psalm 46 verse 1, it says, God is. What does that mean? Every year, He is your refuge. Every month, He is your refuge. Every week, every day, every hour, every minute, every millisecond, God is. Imagine, what would it take for Martin Luther to stay in Wittenberg? That's kind of crazy. When everybody is dying around you, you can easily justify to leave and there's nothing wrong. Unless he's called by God. Unless he believes in his God that his God can protect him. 
and will protect him. Right? And that is what this passage is all about. He is Elohim. God Almighty. Sabi nga, nothing is too difficult for thee. Going back to verse 1, we say, God is our refuge and our strength. When we say He is our strength, what that means is He will uphold us during our most difficult times in our life. He will enable us to stand strong and not be moved in the midst of trials and hardships. God is our strength and He will bear us up. He would enable us to physically and mentally manage the situation. You know, Psalm 46, they say, <coughs> people are really not that sure on what the actual context is. But a lot of um, theologians says it is 2 Kings chapter 18 and 19, wherein we will not go there, it's a, lot, it's a large passage. <coughs> we're, we're in the Assyrian, the Assyrian army has been ruling already all around Judea. They have captured everybody except Jerusalem. And, and the king said, sent some emissaries and told them, um, surrender. Now, the king of Jerusalem didn't want to surrender. But he knew that the enemy was kind of big time, right? Very powerful. And the, the people of Assyria were shouting over the wall. You surrender le lest you go hungry and you start eating your, your poo poo and start drinking your wee wee. That was the threat. And he said, you know what? We're so powerful. We're giving you 2,000 horses to combat us. In fact, when, when the emissary heard it, they tore their clothes. When the king heard it, they tore their clothes. Because for sure, and, 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 and um, Assyria was saying, don't believe Hezekiah. Don't believe your, 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 your king that his God will protect. Because all other gods, all other places who said their God will protect them, we conquered. So what makes you say that your God can beat us? No other gods around. We beat everybody. Try to imagine you're there. About to be slaughtered. Your food supply was cut. You can go out. Because Assyria's, Assyrian army was, uh, was there just outside. But here it says God is our refuge and strength, right? You know, during that two years, God provided them food. God is our strength. He is the one who would physically and mentally empower us to go through times of trials, to go through times of difficulty. For some of us, we might not feel the pinch yet. But if this goes lo longer and longer, we might feel the pinch. Right? In our life, our God should remain our refuge and strength. Not our armies, not our fortress, but God and God Himself. A lot of people, to be honest, can easily say that. Eh? Yeah, God is my refuge. He is my God. Because they're not in the midst of trial. Because their life is not on the line. You will know who your God is in the midst of trial. 
No amount of profession. Yeah. By God's grace, I'm not hungry. So it's easy, oh God will provide. Because I know I have food in the, in the refe. But if I have no food, if, if, if my mind tells me I have nothing, will I come to Him and, re- and cry out, God, you are my refuge. You are my strength. Going back to Psalm 46, verse 1, we continue. And I read, uh, Jerry, you want to read again verse verse 1? Uh, speaker lang, Jerry. Speaker. Okay, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. A very present help in trouble. I mean, it's one thing for God to be very powerful, right? It's one thing for God to have all the resources, right? But what if He's not around? What if He is just far away in the heavens and you are here on earth? What if? What value is that God to me? When he's not around. When he is distant. In times of trouble, the one thing we need is a person that's with me in the trench. A person that's with me in the boat, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of turmoil. I need somebody to be my anchor as I face my challenges. And the Bible tells us that that is our God. He is what? A very. The word very there means exceedingly, extremely, immediately present in our life. God could not be more present in our life. Why? Because God is in us. He is more present than your nagging spouse. Right? Either or your spouse. I didn't say wife or husband. He's more present than that. He's more present than the the five, six guy who's trying to collect from you. He's more present than that. He's more present than your closest relationship, your BFF. A very present help. Help. He's there not to make Osisa. He's there to help, to support those who are frightened, to support those who are in fear, to support those who are frail and afraid. God's always on our side in our lives. Actively involved, especially when we need Him the most. A very, very present help in trouble. You know, a lot of times, right, when you're going up your career, guess what? Your friends increase. When you're done going down in your career, your friends decrease. God is not like that. He's not like, remember the, the prodigal son? When he was splurging money at the bar <laughs> with all the girls and he had a lot of friends. But when he lost everything, no one wants to hang out with him anymore. A friend in need is a friend indeed. God is that friend. He is very present help in times of my trouble. In times of your trouble. Right? 
The, the word trouble there is plural eh. What does it mean? No matter what your problems are. Physical, I'm there. Spiritual, I'm there. Financial, I'm there. Emotional, I'm there. In fact, the Bible tells us God longs to have fellowship with His children in James chapter 4. He desires that through thick and thin. I remember um, in college, I had I really have few friends and and uh, in college I I remember uh, intentionally hanging out with two particular guys and uh, these two particular guys used to be their family used to be cronies of Marcos and they were very up before but when I met them they're like really down <laughs> already and because they're down and I, I, I can sense that the people doesn't know I, I hang out with them and 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 you know I, I felt up to now we're, we're, we're good friends eh? and, and, and God is more than that he is there in times of I don't care what your troubles are really we need to know that our God is there in times of trouble. He is very present. He is our refuge and our strength. Especially during these times of the COVID-19, when we fear what the future lies, know this, He is with us. You cannot get a better help. You cannot find a better support than God. Remember, He is Elohim. No other creature can protect you more. No. No other creature can love you more. For us, Parents, right? We love our kids. We will do anything to protect them. And some people are willing to lay their life for their kids. Or if there's a last piece of chicken, you probably give it to them. Your concern is pure. But can I tell you something? That pales in comparison for the love of God for you. Your love for your spouse and your family and your kids cannot compare to the love of God that He has for you. If you will never leave your kids in times of trouble, what more God? Remember, uh, in the Bible it says, if a mother loves a child, what more me? God. Right? Well, other people boast in their assets, in their friends, we will boast in our God. Right? Um, what's that passage in Jeremiah? Um, some boast in power, some boast in might. Something like that, but uh, we will boast in the Lord. Let's go to verse, verse 2. Florence, your turn. Psalm 46, verse 2. Um, so we will not fear even if earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Therefore, what does that mean, therefore? When the Bible says therefore, it's looking back. Looking back to the ver in verse 1. Therefore, we will not fear. Therefore, if God is our refuge if God is our strength why in the world will you fear right if it's really your refuge if it's really your strength therefore I will not fear 
To fear is illogical. To fear is irrational. Only if Elohim is your God. Alright? Only if. So I ask, why are we anxious? Why are we scared? Are we jittery? Are we nervous? Are we, are we restless? The psalm is here when he says, Therefore we will not fear. That's an emphatic statement. He said, we will not fear. He was bold. In the midst of the Assyrian army surrounding them. About to annihilate them. They say, it does not make sense. But because Elohim is my God, therefore I will not fear. It's a strong confidence in God. Because He's the God of the heavens and the earth. He's the God of the universe. He's the God that says, that, that, that said, let there be light. He's the God that parted the Red Sea. Right? Who, who, who helped deliver Israel, brought the plagues. He's the God who calms the storm. He's the God that supports every heartbeat of every being. Even the ant. Even the fish. All life is sustained by your God. Right? The Bible says, the hearts of the kings is the hands of God. My heart, your heart, beats because of Elohim. He is powerful enough to supply energy to all beings alive. Tell me now, why would you fear? It's like this, eh? What if mm, 30, 40 years ago, right? My bodyguard is Mike Tyson at his prime, right? When he was about 20, that's his prime. And ang kalabo niyo, kindergarten. Okay, claro. Who will win? I mean, don't you find it illogical to, 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 to go to the small kid, six years old, he's your opponent, right? And your backer is Mike Tyson. People say, Bob, what's wrong with you? That's illogical. That's irrational. Ang backer mo si Mike Tyson. Why would you fear? Why? Because the devil is a liar. He deceives us. He makes us view God for what he is not. That he's not powerful. That he does not care. He does not know. He is not in control. Right? So the opposite is true. I will become because God is my refuge. I will be at peace because God is my strength. I will have a quiet spirit. Right? You know, this truth is not ex exclusive to Psalm 46. It's all over. Let's go to Psalm Psalm 3. No, no. Uh, use your mic, please. No, no. Psalm 3, please. Verse 1 and 2, please. Verse 1. Yes. Oh, 
One and two, please. Okay. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. Imagine. But Lord, put a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high. Jump to verse 6, please. Up to verse 6? No, jump to verse 6 na lang. Okay, verse 6. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Damn. Right? They're mocking him, right? Your God will not deliver you. But he said, I will not fear, even if 10,000 of people surrounds me. Why? Because my God is Elohim. Is your God Elohim? Or he's just a name. A name that we're acquainted with. But not a name that we really know. Joey shared to us Psalm 23, right? Even though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death. What, Joey? Oh, Joey's not here. I fear. Si Jen, si Jen. Oh, was it Jen? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Jen. Oh, Jen, even though I want a shadow of death, and the Sabbath, Jen? Okay, I fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Um, turn to Psalms 27. Princess, Psalms 27, verse 1 to 3, please. Um, we don't hear it. Sorry. We don't hear it. There. One, two, three, please. I thought I was unmuted. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Psalm 27, one, two, three. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? When evildoers come upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though a host encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war arise against me, in spite of this, I shall be confident. Right? It's all over. And I'm sure if COVID-19 if COVID does not scare you, something will. Or something is. I don't know what that is, but you know what that is. Other people, your health, your wealth. But realize this, God causes all things to work together for good. Therefore, we are not to be afraid. In fact, it is our duty and privilege to live fearlessly. Sabi ko nga, yung ginawa ni Martin Luther, just to stay in Wittenberg in the midst of the bubonic plague, wow, he's God. It's really big. Ah. Not only that, kulang pa. Tulog kayo sa bahay. Tulog kayo sa bahay. Why would I let you live in my house here as stranger? Because God told me. And God will protect me. By the way, Nagkasakit yung anak eh. In, in fact, after, after the tapos na yung plague, his house was quarantined still. But he, you know, I think he did not get sick. Going back to Psalm 46 verse 2. Uh, Jovi, can you please read that? Verse 2 again of Psalm 46. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though the earth should change. Meaning what? what they're ha what's happening to them is earth changing. 
right? What's like like what's happening now, right? In the world, the earth is the world is changing. All of a sudden, magpagas ka ng pababayaran. <laughs> but though the world is collapsing, we will not collapse. These are troubling times, which completely alter the way that we live. It is a time when the world is upside down. Though the earth should change and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea. You know, ancient minds at that time believes that <coughs> the land is supported by the sea. And in the study of Genesis, particularly Genesis chapter 1. When God created the world there, He did not create things alone. He created order. He created function. So when it says here, and though the mountains slip, uh, slip into the heart of the sea, what that means is it's now chaotic, because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 9 and, and 10, it shows there that God said, Let the waters below the heavens be gathered into one place and let the dry land appear. And there is harmony. There is function. So when the psalmist was saying this, what he is depicting is now there is chaos. Everything is chaotic. Everything is topsy-turvy. That's why, can you imagine the mountains shaking and falling down to the sea? That's why verse 3 says, Though its waters roar and foam, when the mountain starts crashing to the sea, what happens? The, ro the water roars, right? And the water foams. So these are earth-shaking circumstance. These are turmoil. The world is crashing. Everything that was once perceived to be stable is now unstable. Everything that was once upright is now collapse. There's nothing standing in the world that's still standing. Like today, the economy is crashing. Stock market is crashing. Price of oil is crashing. Though the mountain quakes at its swelling pride. Your swelling pride is the mountain before was prideful. It's the most stable thing in the market, right? Who would bet on on the mountain collapsing physically. I wouldn't, not in my lifetime. So you, you swelling pride of the mountain, that's his confidence. It was brought down. It was brought to ground zero. And what the psalmist says, says here, even if the mountain crashes down and my world tumbles down and everything that I hang on and lean on and trust in giving me protection and security and my earth shakes, I will not be moved. I will not be shaken. I will not fear. Even if all of the things that I, I hang on and believe in is now dissolved. Even all of my orientation on what is stable and probable is now gone. Why? Because Elohim is my refuge. Elohim is my strength. This is the testimony of the psalmist. This should be our testimony. You might be afraid of losing your job. You might be afraid of a loved one dying. 
You might be afraid of contracting the coronavirus. Or you might be afraid of being sick. The psalmist says, I will not fear. My circumstance does not dictate my feelings. Sabi ko nga, it's so easy to manifest a, a confidence in God when times are good. That's seed of faith. It's when things are crashing down. When everything doesn't make sense. When the people that you trust the most fails on you and you are there standing not afraid, not confused, not anxious. The psalmist says, I don't care what happens to my life. One thing I know, I will not fear. Why? Because Elohim, the God who loved me, that powerful God who died for me, who gave up his life for me, he is my refuge. And he is my strength. Brothers and sisters, can we say that in our hearts? That is my desire. That even after this Bible study, we will go back to this passage and we would memorize it. Because for certain, trials will come. But know this, your God is ever present at your side, ready for, to protect you, ready to empower you ready to embrace you. Nothing is too difficult for you. Thus says the Lord. Amen.